What's going on, doggies? Welcome back to another video. Woo! Right now we are fighting nature. We've got like a 25 to 30 knot wind. Massive storms are just getting pushed over us. Um, we're fighting this disgusting brown chalk milk water. And um, you know what? It's not gonna stop us from having a great time because this episode is gonna be a banger. I'm gonna answer all of your questions that you've asked me on Instagram. We, I am gonna roll on some of the most epic fishing footage that I've done in a long time. And we're gonna cook that fish two different ways and it's gonna be, it's gonna be bloody good. So thank you for tuning in. And right now we are gonna go find ourselves either find a shelter or build a shelter because 100% this thing is going to dump water on us sooner or later, so um, I'm going to go find a shelter, sit down, get comfortable, and um, woo! this episode should be a banger! This is where we're gonna take base. I think this old boat shed that we've got here, this is gonna be us for the day, I reckon. If it rains, we're gonna stay dry. And it's um, it's actually pretty dope in here, fully protected from the wind. If I sit down here somewhere, oh, look at that. There's absolutely no wind here. A little bit under there. All right, this is us. This is sick. <laughs> This place is actually really, really dope. And it has just started raining. So, we have, we're lucky that we found this place actually, just before the rain hit. So that is perfect timing. But what the problem is, is that the wind is coming underneath here. And that's like literally going under where I want to sit on that side and it is gonna destroy our fire. So um, we'll block this off with a bit of wood and then we'll, um, we'll get stuck into it. That is, a, uh, that is a fair chunk of wood right there. Oosh. All right. Ooh. Let's see if that makes a difference. Oh, that is... <laughs> That is absolutely no wind coming in here now. All right, let's start cooking. Oh, oh, have a go at this. A quick walk down the beach and you can find probably the best chopping board. Look at this bad boy. That is a perfect bit of wood. Obviously it's been drifting around in the ocean. But this is gonna make the best chopping board. We just need to level that up somehow. Look at that. That is our chopping board for the day, that's beautiful. All right, so we've got a lot of questions to get through today. We've also got some of the most insane fishing footage to play a little bit later on. And um, like I said, we've got this fish to cook up. So I'm excited for this one. I hope you guys are too. First off, let's make a little bit of, um, oh, I'll just gonna show you. This is a piece of the most beautiful fresh fish. So this right now, we are gonna make some sashimi out of this and uh look this is if you don't know what fish this is this is fresh amberjack it is not a sm it doesn't smell like a smelly fish so it's a beautiful fish to make sashimi with this was caught yesterday and it is as fresh as fish gets so um look this is a little bit of an entree and then um or a starter or whatever you want to call it and then we've got some amazing an amazing feed to cook up a little bit later on so there's a lot of there's a lot of tricks in that bag behind me there. I mean, look at this. It doesn't come much fresher or beautiful than this. Oh, have a go at that, would you? That is what I'm talking about. Wouldn't be sashimi without a little bit of soy sauce. So we're going to dust it with a bit of soy sauce. Oh my goodness. Always, always putting the plastic back in your bag. Take it home, don't leave it on the bloody beach. One more soy sauce for good luck. 
Oh, look at this, would ya? This is ridiculous. So it wouldn't be a sashimi without a couple of, what are these seeds called? Sesame seeds, there you go, that's the name. Wouldn't be sashimi without a couple of sesame seeds on there. Look at this, this fish was swimming around yesterday, mate. It's as fresh as fresh can get. Look at this, that'll do. Have a go at that, would ya? All right, here goes, the first piece of fish. She's looking delicious. <laughs> it's so good, man. Oh my God. That is ridiculously good. And because we're sitting in a little boat shed, right now it's actually pissing down with rain. So um, I think it just makes it taste that little bit better. Look at that, two pieces in one. <laughs> and we have a second where we're gonna be cooking fish today. Is um, look, I don't know what this is. I saw it in a shop the other day and they call it like a portable grill or like some sort of a grill thing. I've got no idea how it works, but um, we're about to find out. Righto. So that's obviously your grill plate. No idea what that's for. Ah, so here's the charcoal beads. All right, look at this. A little bit of um, a stepping up in the world here, doggies. Fully, fully stepping up in the world. These must be like semi flammable because it says that you can light them. I don't know, let's just try this. I don't even know if this is gonna work. Come on! <laughs> Look at this! It is absolutely pumping now! Check this out! Oh, that is so hot! Yes! Alright, this thing is definitely doing its job now. We have three pieces of this beautiful fresh sashimi left and um, what I'm going to do... I'm going to cut up a little bit of onion, we're going to cut up the rest of the fish. Once this thing goes down to like a coals, We'll start cooking on this, but in the meantime, while I'm waiting for this, while I'm cutting up the onion, I'll roll on those clips from the fishing trip we did yesterday. It was, um, it was insane, dude. Like, look, we caught a marlin, for God's sake, a marlin on the very first lure that hit the water. So that just blew my mind, and then it just got better and better as the day went on. So um, enjoy that footage. I'm going to sit here. While you enjoy that, I'm going to enjoy this, and um, I'll see you guys back here, and we'll answer all of those questions that you doggies have. You much love. Oh man, this is hectic. Well, it's definitely not a nice day out here, that's for sure. It is absolutely kissing down with rain right now. This has been one of the biggest missions I've done in a long time, but the dopest missions. We are finally just about on the spot we want to fish. Wait a minute, what is the time even? So we started at four o'clock in the morning, it's now nine o'clock. So we've been out here for a long time fighting some hectic weather, but um, I can finally see land, I'll show you. That's Java, right there. 
we came from all the way there and the boys are ready let's go doggies big big hookups let's go Woo! all right we're so close to the destination we've been driving for i don't even know how many hours now we've been driving we've been steaming we've got the whole entire floor oh my god the whole entire floor of this boat is full of fuel we have like 20 litre jerry cans across the bottom of the boat so we've got that much fuel and the, and the boys were just saying that if it gets really rough on the way home we're gonna have to sleep tonight on the boat we'll take cover in a little bay in java we'll sleep the night there and then in the morning we'll get up hopefully the wind dies off and we can continue this um, and we can get home so the next couple of hours or the next 24 hours is going to be very interesting but very epic this is meant to be a sick fishing spot so um oh man i'm excited i just want to get there and um oh, it was a cold morning man a freezing cold but now sun's out Fishing knots are coming out and um, some big hookups are on the way. <laughs> right, this is what we're fishing. 250 gram jig. We're dropping it down and um, let's hope we get some tight lines. Here we go. I don't even know how deep it is here, but we're going down. How deep is it, bruh? 120. There you go. 120 metres of water. Holy shit, you're not even going to believe this. My jig didn't even hit the bottom. And the, cap yeah, come on, come on, come on. the captain has just hooked onto a fucking marlin. He is fully launching out of the water. Yeah, bruh. I can't believe this is literally we've been here for not even a minute. We haven't even been here for a minute. And he's hooked up to a marlin on the jig. No way, man. This is insane. Playing, playing, playing. It's gonna go, there it goes. Okay. All right, so the captain's back is broken. My back. Your back's cooked, huh? All right, all right. So I'm taking right. over for right. him. Black arrow, black arrow, black arrow. Let's try, let's try, let's try, Oh, he's going under the prop. Go, go, come on, get away. Woohoo! Arif Manes. Oh, hey, look at it go! Oh, oh. Hey, hey, careful! Get the tail, tail! Oh, oh no! Oh, what a mad! You got him? Ah, oh, no! Ah, oh, shit! Oh, the line's so frayed, look. Huh? The line's frayed. It's like paper at the end. Oh, you're kidding me. That was a probably 50 kilo marlin just then. We've been here for about, no shit, that was the first jig in the water. And that was around about a 50 kilo marlin. Oh my God, it just, because they were only using PE4 gear, it was just slowly rubbing on his nose and eventually twang, but oh, we're so close to getting that thing in. All right, we've only really just started fishing, so I think today is going to be very interesting. Woo! Fish on, fish on! Get up here. Yeah. 
There we go. What's it mean? That's an amberjack, and that is going to be breakfast. Sashimi fresh. So that's actually what we came out here to target today. That is a beautiful little amberjack. Puts up such a fun little fight in 150. I'll up with it. Woo! Day's getting better and better. <laughs> Look at that rod bend. <laughs> Look at this rod bend. <laughs> Yeah, now that's a noodle rod. <laughs> Spaghetti rod. Spaghetti rod. Look at it, man. It's full tweaking. Yes, that's sick. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good place, that one. Yeah, yeah. baby. Woo. Yeah, doggy. Yeah, doggy. Yeah, there's that sound. <laughs> that beautiful sound. Pump like a man. Pumping like a girl. <laughs> Get up here. Oh, how's that for service? Nah, now. Oh, the okay. dick grip. I'm like a man. That's better on my control. Be <laughs> careful, your control is Hey! Oh, hey, baby! That's a little bit bigger. Get the one. Here she is. Boy! Get the one, bro. Success! Yeah, baby! This boy! <laughs> Success, yeah? This one is a little bit bigger. There we go. So we come out here to get a couple of amberjack and that is a beautiful amberjack. Yeah, boys. Good <laughs> idea. That's so sick. Mwah. Sashimi time. Sashimi time for sure, boy. Look at that. Hooked in perfectly. Woo. So stoked right now. Yeah, the doggy's on. Get him up, get him up. Get him up. to the kitchen it has been raining the whole time you guys have been gone it is literally we are so lucky that we found this little boat shed because it is working like a dream boat right now so i've cut up the onion i've cut up the fish i've put um this epic local seasoning on the fish i've got no idea what it's called but it tastes real good with fish so this is what we'll be cooking up today these bloody things and they're gonna taste good man these little fish skewers are gonna go onto this random little oven cooking grill thing that i found it is pumping out some serious heat right now i'm actually sweating bullets in this kitchen so look that was a mad fishing trip eh? first drop marlin the captain got that on very light line i think he was using 40 pound leader which is extremely light for a fish of that size and unfortunately his back blew out about 40 minutes into the fight then he handed me the rod i was onto it for about 15 minutes and then that line just slowly kept rubbing on its bill on its bill and it um, snapped off so Would have been so dope to land that fish, but um, look it's so nice to see it swim away and fight another day So I'm pretty much coming down to the end of these skewers and then we're gonna get stuck into these questions But I It wouldn't be a bloody video without a coconut <laughs> That was an absolute mission to get down but we got it, and no, I didn't climb the tree. Yes, I used a stick and I did this because that's the only way I know how to get him down. But here's our beautiful lunch. 
let's get stuck into this. Woo! Listen to that sizzle. Oh man, this is what it's all about. Freshest fish on the grill. Shit spacing, come on brother. There we go, look at that. Beautiful. We'll get this on there. Yum. <laughs> that is already smelling ridiculously good. So we're just gonna open this coconut. The cheetah's way. Nothing flash. Oi. It's gonna punch a little hole in the side here. Oh, look at him go. Then it's actually really funny. Where we filmed that seven day coconut video, I literally stayed, I slept just here. And I walked about two minutes that way to get this coconut just then, and this is probably one of the best coconuts we would have got on that whole video. Oi. This is a really good coconut. All right, let's get stuck into these questions because there's a lot of questions here. So I'm just gonna start from the top. I haven't really looked at any of these, so I'm just gonna answer them off the top of my head, but there is a lot of questions to get through. So let's start at the top. Um, when do you plan to come back to Australia and would you do a trip around Australia? Yes, 110%, I wanna go back home. I am actually missing home like you would not believe. It's a, it's more about like over here in Indo, I have the ultimate freedom, but it's just the, the rubbish, the pollution, the lack of fish that are here. It's sort of like getting to me so much where in Australia they have rules where like fishing, if the fish are just abundant there, I miss it. Right now I'm actually supposed to be in my car driving around Australia. That was my plan before Corona hit. So I'm sort of just sitting here waiting for it all to be over to go back to Australia. And then you're probably asking yourself, well, why don't you just go back to Australia now? All right, watch this. So I'm gonna look at the flights from Bali to Perth, and that's where I'm from, I'm from Perth. So I'm gonna look at the flights from Bali to Perth and watch how much they are. It's disgusting, man. Flights from Perth to Bali. Let's say we'll just do it. We'll do it for the 27th. Um, here, all right. So flying Garuda Air is the only airline you can fly from Bali to Perth. And this is in Rupia. 86,180,731 Rupia. Now if you change that into Australian dollars, that works out to be $7,964.73. So it's nearly $8,000 for me to fly from Bali to back to a Perth right now. And um, that's a cheap flight. Me and my girlfriend looked the other night, that was $15,000 for a one-way flight back to Perth. So you can stick that right where the sun doesn't shine. I'm not paying that much for a flight back home. But to answer the question, 100%, I really wanna go home. Like I said, I'm supposed to be driving around Australia right now in my car and um, well, that's not happening, but yes, I really, really want to go back to Australia. I miss the cleanliness, cleanliness, you know what I'm trying to say. I just miss the whole of like mud crabbing, fishing, sleeping in my swag. Holy shit, I miss my swag like you wouldn't believe. So yes, I'm definitely going home back to Australia, but it's just, it's just about when the timing's right. What is your favorite place to camp? <laughs> Doesn't matter where I'm camping, I'll camp absolutely anywhere. As long as, like I love being alone, I love being solo, I don't like camping where other people are camping, like I don't know, I don't understand people when they go to caravan parks and there's like a guy right there having a shit in his tent or whatever and I'm like, well I love being free, I love the freedom, so camping anywhere is like, it's just my dream, but as long as I'm like by myself or even if I'm with people but it's just like in the real nature, that's what I love the most, I don't like being in crowded places, so to answer your question, I like camping absolutely anywhere, but my ideal places are like proper solo in the bush where there's no one or nothing around me. All right, so this is a pretty good question that relates to the first question. Is there anything being done about the overfishing in the waters and the horrific water pollution? Right now in Bali where I am, 
there is nothing like there are i see people doing beach cleanups and stuff but look the the pollution here is just it is ridiculous for an example i went out fishing the other day with one of my good friends and the way that they put their bait we we're fishing in over a thousand meters of water right so they want to get their baits down to around 250 meters they tie up they get it they take out a bag of rocks with them and they'll take out a bag and then another bag of plastic bags they tie the plastic bag around the rock then they put the hook into the top of the plastic bag and they drop it over the boat and they'll let that plastic bag and rock rock sink all the way down to their desired depth and when they're about as deep as they want they'll just do one big yank like that and the hook will pull through the plastic and that plastic bag and rock will continue to go to the bottom of the ocean floor and then their bait kind of sits at the level they want it so we were fishing at a, we were fishing in an area where there was about 15 boats in about the size of a football field all fishing that same method so every single time they drop a bait down each boat drops plastic a plastic bag into the water just to get their bait down so and that's like when i saw that it blew my mind and i've said to myself i'm not going fishing with that guy anymore i don't support it i said to him like what are you doing dude why aren't you using like banana leaf or why don't you use like a you know like something that's natural and he just like looked at me like why would you even do that so the problem with the pollution over here i i think that it's more about teaching people it's it's about trying to teach them the ways but it's just the way that they've been brought up and it's it's just so hard like it's really hard oh these are looking so good man all right the next question is have you ever thought of making videos in different countries 110 percent i would love to travel the world and just make survival videos fishing videos just traveling and just just traveling with a camera and just doing what i do that's something that i would love to do but obviously right now with the COVID and all the bullshit right now i'm just sort of locked down in indonesia until it's over but once this all blows over, if it ever blows over, that's definitely something that I'm going to be doing. I want to travel. I don't know. I just want to have the, that is the ultimate freedom really for me. Just being able to travel and just every country. I want to go do survival videos in snow. I want to go do survival videos in the bloody mountains of some country. I want to fish in, oh, I want to go everywhere, man. Why not? This is what life's for. Life's for living. So that's definitely, I do want to travel every single country, 100%. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, the next question is, do you think you're successful? <laughs> um, I think that everybody has a different look at success, but I would say at my point where I am in life right now, I am extremely super, 100%, 110% successful. So success for me is not owning a big house. It's not owning a dope car. It's not about having a million dollars in the bank. Success for me is doing this right now. Like if I can just... If I can happily be doing this and now be getting paid for it via YouTube, 100% that is all I want in life. I don't know, I don't, I don't want a lot of like materialistic things, but if I can live a life like I'm living now, yes, 100% I say that I am successful. What gear do you film your videos with? The sound is so crisp and so clear. Um, I, I literally only film on GoPros, that's it. If you, from episode one to about 37, I was using a GoPro 7 and a GoPro 8 and then I dropped the GoPro 7 and I picked up a GoPro 9. So now I'm filming on a GoPro 8 and a GoPro 9. So I'm filming on the GoPro 9 right now and um, I don't use any external microphones. I literally just have a GoPro on a stick and that is it. Like I think that I don't do anything with the settings. It's just <laughs> obviously like if the wind's coming this way, you face the camera away from the wind and there's like a few little things that you need to do because I don't use external microphones, but I don't use any kind of flash camera gear because if I had a big camera and like these big vlogging cameras, that's just a pain in the ass, man. Why would you want that when you can have a sick little GoPro? So that's all I use is just two GoPros and I edit all of my videos on Premiere Pro. What is your main occupation apart from YouTube? So right now, YouTube is my full-time job. Um, We've just hit over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is like, it blows my mind every single day that I've done that in just over a year. So thank you to every single person who subscribed, liked, all of the bullshit that comes with it. Thank you so much because it actually means a lot and it's I'm starting to live the life that I've dreamt of for my whole life. So this is what I do for work now. This is my full-time job and believe it or not, this is paying better than a job in, than, than it was when I was a plumber in the mines and that just blows my mind every single day as well but yes this is my full-time job I don't do anything else except for this YouTube now
Ooh. Too much talking. Next question. Can you say hi to me? My name is Spencer and I'm also a first class Boy Scout. What's going on, Spencer, you legend? Ooh, what are the big plans for 2021? All right, so I have a lot of plans for 2021. Like ever since I started YouTube and I, could, and I found out that it's possible for me, who is just like an average Joe, I'm not smart, I'm not intelligent, for me to make a YouTube channel up to 400,000 subscribers in this short amount of time, it like clicks something in my brain that anything is possible. So um, look, I'm, I'm striving for everything I can in this world while I'm alive. Like I've got some big things coming up in 2021, which hopefully I will show you guys very, very soon. Like hopefully within a week or two very soon. Um, the clothing, the online store, that's so many people asking about that. That is this close. It's like this close to being ready to go. So that has been an absolute struggle for me because the clothes are all coming from Australia and I'm stuck in Indonesia. So trying to work out this like back and forth with materials and stuff has just been an absolute headache. But look, I'm wearing one of these shirts now. The hats are just absolutely joy. The clothes and material, the way they fit is so good. I gave it to a couple of my mates in Perth and they said, look, it's just dope. So very, 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 very soon it's going to drop and um, I'm very, very excited about it. But yes, 2021 big plans and hopefully fingers crossed like me and my girlfriend we can go back to australia jump in my car and do that trip that i've been wanting to do forever all right where's another question there's just like 500 questions when are you coming back to australia when are you coming back to australia soon as i can come back to australia i will be there and um look i cannot wait it's been my dream for probably the last six years to do a lap around australia so i'm coming back um where did you meet Mucky and does she go on adventures with you often? All right, so if you guys don't know who Mucky is, Mucky is my beautiful girlfriend. Uh, I met her in Bali four years ago. So my girlfriend Mucky, she's from Czech Republic, so she's from Europe. And um, we met in Bali four years ago and pretty much as soon as I met her at the pub, I was like, man, this chick is a, is a lord. And we went on a trip three days later to the islands off of Bali. And she is just a full-on travel nut. So she loves travel. She loves adventure just as much as I do. So it's pretty cool to have a chick who lets you do or like does travels like you. But also she lets me do whatever I want to do. Like I literally fish five times, four times a week. And she's just like, see ya, see ya, bye, have fun. It's like, it's so good. And um, no, she's, a, she's a weapon of a chick. And hopefully I can get her back into Australia because it's actually really hard for me to get because she's from Czech Republic, it's hard for me to get her back to Australia as well. So we're going through all the paperwork now, trying to get her back in so we can do this trip around Oz. Please let us back in. Who do you go for in the AFL? Um, nobody. <laughs> I don't follow any sports. I literally don't even, I haven't owned a TV for probably about 10 years. Like I don't watch TV. Believe it or not, I don't even really watch YouTube. Um, I don't ever really sit, I have this like sort of personality where I'm just like bang, bang, go, 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 go. I don't, even when I cook dinner at home, my chick's like, dude, sit down and eat your food. And like, I'll be cooking it in the kitchen and I'll just eat it straight away because I'm just like, do, 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 do. I just always got to be doing things. So <laughs> that kind of went off track. No, I don't follow any football, but I suppose the reason I don't is because I don't watch TV. I don't really watch anything really. I don't really have any interest in sitting down and watching a screen when I can be out doing this kind of stuff or I don't know. It doesn't really interest me at all. Uh, where's the next one? Have you ever been close to starving when shooting a vid? Hell yeah, man. Pretty much every time I go land based fishing in Bali or any time you see me eating snails, that is when I'm really hungry because obviously we're not catching fish. So, <laughs> um, Look, I don't think you'd ever starve. There's always something to eat anywhere you are in the world. There's always going to be some kind of a food source. You just need to know the area and what food's edible. But no, nah, not really. I actually really do enjoy eating those snails. And um, there's a couple of videos that I want to start doing, eating different kinds of like fully whack-ass bush tucker. Like it's really weird food, but um, it's edible. And yeah, I don't really ever starve. I've never starved, but I have been super hungry. That's why you eat snails. Whoa. Have a look at this. They're coming along so good. It's actually like slow cook, slow cooking them. Oh, this one's a little bit. That one's seen better days, but it's still gonna taste it. Right? That's hot there. All right, next one is, 
Do your tattoos have meaning and do you have any more coming? Um, yes, my pretty much every single tattoo I have on my body, it means something to me. So when I was when I was like the age of 21, 22, I lived in a house in Scarborough in Perth. It was called the Pig Pen. It was just a house where I lived, I don't know, five people, five of my best mates lived in that house. But at any day, there was between 10 to 15 people every day at the house, drinking, partying, just having a hell time, being young and dumb. And um, I bought a tattoo gun online on eBay. And as soon as that tattoo gun entered that premises, holy moly, there was some dumb, drunken tattoos getting done. So a lot of my tattoos have been under the influence of a whole lot of beers, but the memories that come with them are just insane. So like a lot of my, a lot of the boys back home or all the mates or my mates have pretty much from here up on their legs is just the most <laughs> obscene, ridiculous tattoos. And um, look, like my best mate Bobo did that. My best mate Jake did that. I got mates when I was in the mines, I took my tattoo gun to the mines. We did tattoos up there. So now that I look back, like some of them are pretty stupid. This one's from when I did like a trip with my best mate Brad. We drove around half of Australia and we got this tattoo. Like everything has a meaning. Yes, everything has a meaning. This is my best mate's girlfriend did this one. So everything has a meaning. And um, do I want to get more tattoos? Right now, not really. I sort of went through a phase, but I kind of would like to get like a chest tattoo maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right, well, that one's well done. There's like one section on this grill, which is extremely hot. And they're looking pretty, they're actually nearly done, pretty close. All right, next question. Do any adventures turn out bad and do you not post them? Um, I have, to this point right now, I have posted every single video that I've been out to film. And uh, I've come close not to posting videos because there was a section between episode 10 and probably episode 20, somewhere around there where we were fishing in Bali, land-based fishing. And I think it was like five episodes in a row where we didn't get a fish. And I was like, this is just getting ridiculous. People in the comments were just scoldering me like, dude, this guy's the shittest fisherman, what a loser. I was like, shut up. But um, no, I post everything because for me, it's more about the adventure than about catching fish. So those times that I went out and I didn't catch fish, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna post these videos because personally for me, it's more about the adventure. So no, every time I, Every time I've been out to film a video, I've uploaded it to YouTube. Have a go at these. These are gonna be ridiculously good. Those ones are done. That one's done. These two are still a little bit more. All right, the next question is, is there a chance that you'll visit the Philippines? I've actually been to the Philippines twice, but that was before I was doing YouTube and 100% I would love to go back there. The Philippines is the most amazing, beautiful, I'd love to go back there with my dive gear because it is some of the best free diving that I ever did was in the Philippines. It is so beautiful, man. Next question. Do you ever run into any kind of trouble romping around these sick islands? Um, not really. Like the people, the Indonesian people are so beautiful, man. They are actually really, honestly, the most beautiful people in the world. Probably the only time we've ever had a problem was with my girlfriend where we are in I don't even know what island that was. We were in an island and we did a trip across the island for the day and it was like, we left that side at sunset. We were coming back through the center of the island and we got a flat tire on the bike. It would have been about 10 o'clock at night and we had a flat tire and there was like a little, a little hut like this with a pool table underneath it. And these local guys were drinking a rack, which is like a local alcohol. And when we pulled over and I was like, oh boys, can you guys help us with this flat tire? They were, extremely maggot like they were proper drunk and because my girlfriend they're there they, they were just acting super sketchy around my girlfriend like i was like yo stand on that side of the bike i was trying to like and they were like you're coming just being very very weird so we ended up just driving off with a flat tire and like got out of there but that's the only time i've really had a problem where i thought like all right this is going to go south but apart from that it is never i've never ever run into a problem apart from that one it's been beautiful <laughs> oh, this is so good. Do you ever get an up upset stomach or a blast out of your rear from consuming anything? <laughs> uh, I think I've got a stomach of steel. Like I can literally just about eat anything and I do not, I never get sick. I've never been sick. Like I've never really been properly sick over here all the years I've lived here. And I eat some weird shit, man. And I don't ever really get sick. So no, I've never had a blast from my rear from eating weird foods. 
All right, this is like the fourth time this question's come up. So tell us more about your girlfriend. Um, I think I've told you already, she's from Czech Republic. We've been together for four years. Um, she likes traveling just as much as I do. So my girlfriend works as a photographer. So I do my YouTube stuff. Before I did YouTube, we were actually traveling. We were literally traveling the world. We, we did all of Europe. We did the Philippines. We did a shitload of Indonesia. We did a lot of trips in Australia and she is an amazing photographer. So she makes money by doing photos. So before I started this YouTube game and it actually like this opened my eyes up to that it's possible to make money on YouTube because she makes money selling her photos, selling prints. And um, she got me into photography, which kind of led to this whole entire YouTube game. But my girlfriend is making a good living from Instagram. She sells a lot of prints, works with companies on Instagram. And that's what we did for maybe a year or two. We traveled and that was our job. That was my job, taking photos with her. So we've got a travel Instagram account, which is, um, I'll leave it here or here or here or something. And I'll leave it in the description if you guys want to check it out. That's like a completely different thing from what you see on my Instagram. It's more like professional photos and like beautiful. It is actually like, I look at the photos that we take and I'm like, what the hell, that's amazing. But yeah, that's what she does for work. And um, she's an absolute lord of a woman. Would you ever shoot a catch and cook video with a fan? Hell yeah. If I ever see anybody, like somebody who knows me from YouTube or whatever, and they're like, oh dude, let's go on an adventure. I'm 100% down with that, man. Let's go. I would love to do something like that. It'd be sick. Look at this. Are you joking? So this is amberjack, onion, and the most amazing spice. I'm not even sure what it is, but it's going to taste bloody amazing. Oh, it's so good, man. I wish I could, like, stick this in so you guys can taste it right now. Holy shit. That's what it's all about. All right, let's change this camera angle up a little bit and um, get into this question. Now, this is by far the most asked question. Why did you start filming YouTube? What made you start YouTube? And how did you grow your quit your channel so bloody quick? Um, <laughs> good question. So I started YouTube purely because I saw other people doing YouTube and I knew that they were making some ridiculous kind of coin doing things that they love. And I was like, I remember standing in the trenches at work, like just looking out and I'm like, this is not where I want to be right now. Like I want to be out fishing, diving, eating snails, doing some shit that I love doing every single day. And then if you can make money doing that, well, ha, you've made it in life. So I knew that I wanted to start YouTube a year before I started my YouTube channel. Wait a minute, does that even make sense? Yeah, I wanted to start YouTube a year before I even started. But you know what I mean. So I gave myself one year to save up as much money as I could to study YouTube. How does YouTube work? How does the algorithm work? How do you get views on YouTube? Like, believe it or not, I used to sit up to two or three in the morning in my little donger in the mines and research how to make money on YouTube, how to get big on YouTube. So I was a full bottle the day that I dropped that first ever video. And I think that's what a lot of people don't do. So there's a lot of questions also, how do I start a YouTube channel? I would recommend research the shit out of YouTube, like not just YouTube, if you want to do anything in life, like research how it works, you're a full bottle. So once you start at it, you can go in. That first video, within a month of being online, my very first video got over a million views. So it just shows that taking the time, taking the effort, it paid off big time for me. Um, I worked for a year, I saved as much money as I could. I worked for eight months, I think. I saved up as much money as I could. So when I came over into Indonesia, I had nothing to stop me. I could just put 100% concentration into this YouTube game because I knew that's what I wanted to do as a job and that's how I want to live the rest of my life, just creating content, making the best videos I can, obviously for you guys, but also getting paid for what I do. So that is what I did and it is completely 100% paying off now. Like those late mornings where I stayed up till 2 a.m., my eyes falling out of my head reading articles about how to be big on YouTube. Uh, absolutely paying off right now. Like I said, this is my full-time job and if I can help anybody do it, like I would love to help you guys do it also, but I would, I would definitely say, don't just start when you've got $20, $20 in the bank because you're gonna have to go to work and consistency is key. If you can pump out a video every week or even better, two videos a week, that's gonna make you drive so much faster. So there's also a lot of people in the comments there asking, 
how do they start their YouTube channel? I would not start until you're a full bottle. You've got the savings behind you where you can just go head in first and just smash out as much content as possible and um, hopefully you succeed because look, I'm living my dream right now and it's um, all thank you to you guys, but also there was a lot of hard work that went in it behind the scenes and still every single day. It is a grind, but um, I'm very happy where I am right now in life. <laughs> so many questions again asking this. What knives do you use? Okay, look, where, where is this bad boy? So these are the two knives that you will see in most of my videos. This one and this one. So, look, this knife is not a good knife. I wouldn't recommend you getting a knife like this. If you can see it, it's not, it's not straight anymore. It's like bent to this funky angle because I was trying to like chop wood with it the other day and it's just, I don't know, it's more of like a kitchen knife than an outside camping knife. But if you want to know what it's called, it's called a, I don't, I can't read that. Can you read that? I can't read that. Anyway, it's not a great knife, so I wouldn't say get it. I'm hopefully getting my best mate in Australia is making me a knife. Hopefully that comes in, we'll see. And then um, this thing is a knife I bought over in Indonesia. It cost 15, what, $15 to buy this thing, and I thought it was gonna be a piece of shit. It's actually a very good knife, but it doesn't have any it doesn't have anything except for a stamp of an eagle and it says stainless steel china so i don't know it doesn't have a brand i don't know what it is it's been a very good knife it costs 15 dollars man and it's not rusting it's always got a sharp edge on it well most of the time and um it's been actually a very very good knife but it's de they're definitely two knives that are not good quality and i wouldn't recommend going to spend money on this thing there are so many better knives in the market and when i get back to australia Obviously, I've got all of my good stuff there, so I wouldn't recommend getting this. It's more of a kitchen knife than a camping knife. All right, next one is, are you single? <laughs> well, that depends how much money you got, darling. <laughs> no, no, I'm not single. I have a beautiful girlfriend. What did you do for a career before YouTube? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know that already. I was a plumber slash photographer. Um... How do you sleep covered in sand? I think I'm just completely used to it. So there's another couple of questions in here asking how do you sleep in that tent with no blankets? Indonesia, if you have never been here, is humid, hot country. So, and you know what? I can literally sleep just about anywhere. And when I do these missions, I do like massive walks. Like I walk for two to three to four hours up the coast sometimes. And at the end of the day, I am just absolutely knackered. So when I sleep in the tent, I'm just like, boop, oh, see ya bud. So um, with that new mattress, with having the new tent and the pillow, especially the pillow, I, am, I can literally just about sleep anywhere with anything on me. I don't really care. So that's the answer to that. I can pretty much just sleep anywhere. Get off. Um, next one. If you can change anything in Indonesia, what would it be? 100% the, the rubbish problem here. It is just, it is obviously you guys watch my videos. It is disgusting. Um, you should come to New Zealand. Brother, if I could come to New Zealand right now, I'd get on a plane and I would be there because New Zealand looks so dope. I would love to get in a car and drive around New Zealand. That would be so dope. How often do you fish for fun? Every single time I go out and film a video, I fish for fun. Um, when I film these videos, I try not to pressure myself too much into like, I, if, if I'm not having fun, I'll stop filming because it's that is at the end of the day my whole entire goal is to have fun doing what I'm doing so I try to keep myself having as much fun as possible and a lot of people like say like how could it be fun changing the camera angles and like putting the camera there walking off coming back to get the camera I honestly honestly generally love filming these videos like it is just as much fun as catching a fish or eating the fish or doing anything like I love the filming and I also absolutely froth getting home, cracking a cold beer, and then getting stuck into editing a video for six to 10 hours or whatever it takes me to edit a video. I absolutely love it. So the whole entire process from waking up in the morning to going fishing, to going walking along the beach, filming, editing, I love the whole entire package. It's just so much fun. How do you stay so positive and happy all the time? Um, 
I, I've always been like a super positive person and if I'm ever down, I really, really tried my hardest to like tweak my head into a positive state, but man, we're all human. I don't, I'm not always happy, but I'm happy pretty much 99% of the time. And it's purely because I'm doing now what I love to do. Like, obviously I wasn't this happy when I was stuck in the mines for one month in a tiny little room. That wasn't my happiest, but now I'm literally happy 99% of the time because I am doing what I love every single day. So just, I don't know. I'm very, very grateful for where I am in life right now. What is your favorite seafood? Ah, uh, that's, a, that's a hard question. Favorite seafood? Drrr. All right. Seafood as in like things that swim in the ocean, number one would be squid. And then fish would come very close to that number two. But I love fish. I love squid when it's cooked properly. Um, then fish, but the number one on top of the chart by far is mud crab or blue swimmer crab. Blue manna crab, mud crab, they're up there with my favorite kind of seafood, which is something that I really miss about being back in Australia. And I am like pulling my hair out that I can't go back and do it is going mud crabbing, walking through the mangroves, sticking my hand down them big holes, pulling out them juicy mud crabs. Ooh, man, I can't wait until I'm back in Oz doing that kind of stuff. There are so many questions to go through. Um, I don't know how long this video is gonna go for, but I'll just try to answer as many as I can. Where did you grow up and where did you find your love for the outdoors? Um, so when I was like from the age of year two to the age of about 17 or 18, I lived on a little farm. It was like seven acres of, of land and my dad had camels. And I suppose this is where, <laughs> yes, that's right, he has camels like the big the big gangly animal with a big hump on the back so we had like i don't know we had like 10 camels on our property we had goats we had donkeys we had we had so many we had horses we had ducks we had chickens so it was like a full little farm and um that's where i suppose that's where like the start of the whole entire loving the outdoors was like my mom is an absolute lord of a woman and she's like if, we, if you're watching TV, she was like, go outside and do something. Get on your bike and go and cut yourself. And you know, she's like that kind of mum who's like, go outside and have fun, get off the TV. So I probably owe it to my mum that I'm like I am right now because she would let me literally just go outside. I'd be like eating tadpoles when I was a kid. There's photos of me like with tadpoles, like trying to eat them. And I don't know, I suppose that's where I grew up and I love the outdoors. Like my brother and my sister, we used to drag each other through like the muddy paddocks of our property in winter. Had like a ride on lawnmower with a garden hose and a surfboard at the back and like tow each other around through the mud like i don't know i suppose that's where i really really started at a young age is loving the um outdoors i suppose and my dad's just like a fully blown travel nut he used to get on his camels and just go into the bush he used to have a rifle on the side like a gun on the side of his camels water food and he just used to disappear into the bush for days weeks and just travel so i suppose that's where i get my love for the outdoors that's what I reckon anyway. Ooh, how long have we been sitting here for? Quite a while. <laughs> uh, what is the next one of these? Da, 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 da. Where did you learn your survival skills? Any books to recommend? This is a question that got lot, asked a lot as well. And um, I don't ever read books. I've never read a book in my whole entire life. <laughs> it's pretty bad, eh? But I've never read a book in my entire life. I literally think you just pick up these skills from just being outside and I don't know just literally being outside and just doing things like you don't have you don't learn it from watching I suppose you do learn it from reading a book or watching it a video but even if you read something in a book and went outside and did it it's not gonna work you've got to like practice that thing so something that I do a lot in Indonesia is I just talk to people the locals that's the main way you learn stuff like you see them eating seaweed or collecting seaweed and I'm like what's that for is that for Makan can you eat it and then you see some guy catching some sort of fish in a, di in a weird way. I'm like, what, how does this work? You know, you ask people, you learn. So that's the best way to learn, I suppose. I've never really done any courses on survival. I just, um, I suppose it's just knowledge and being outside and just, just doing it. Oy. All right, this is a pretty good question that I just looked at. Someone's asking, what's your advice to someone sitting in home in quarantine right now? Um, look, if I was stuck in quarantine right now, this very second, and I still didn't know what I wanted to do in life, even if, like, 
if I had the time and opportunity to be stuck inside with nothing to do, I would use that time to my advantage and I would be researching. Just use that time to, so when this coronavirus is over, you can go outside and you can be the best at what you want to do. Like I would use this time to research whatever it is that you want to be. You want to be a chef, you want to be a hairdresser, you want to be a YouTuber, you want to be whatever. You want to be an investor, you want to do whatever you want to do. Use this time use this time to your benefit so once this corona's over you're like a full bottle you've got the brain you've got the mindset to go chase your dreams don't just sit at home play video games watch tv and waste this time because it's actually a valuable time i think anyway like me personally i'm trying to start this clothing brand i'm trying to keep a video coming out each week and i'm doing two other little businesses on the side which i'm trying to start up and to be honest i would love to be stuck in a room for one month with no distractions just so i can punch out all the things I have on this list and then I can continue doing this YouTube stuff but that's what I would say anyway I would use this time to your use this time to your advantage don't just waste it playing video games watching TV sleeping in be productive get shit done live the life you want to live because life is beautiful once you live the life you want all right that kind of oh my god my knees are stiff I'm getting old boys that kind of sums up pretty much all the questions there's a couple more but um this is probably really dragging on. So I think I got to the most important ones. And the last question is, what do you like most about YouTube? Um, look, getting paid to do what I love, number one. Obviously, the comment, reading the comments from you guys, whether it be on Instagram or the YouTube in the comment section, literally, it touches me like you will never believe. I remember watching YouTubers and they're like, thank you guys so much for the support. And I was always like, shut up, idiot. But now I know what they mean by thank you so much for the support. It literally, it touches me like you wouldn't believe. So thank you guys for the support. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for all the questions, should I say. And um, look, I'll see you in the next video. And um, 2021, let's make this one a banger. Much love and I'll see you in the next video. Yo.